What's up guys, I'm Heath, this is Forged America. If you're a laser engraver and you wanna learn how to make amazing leather swag, like things you see here, then this is the video for you. For you country music fans out there, if you think you just saw country music's baddest of the bad boys wearing my leather swag in those pictures, you are correct. I've been making Brantley Gilbert's leather cuffs for the last three years. I've also made items for Charlie Daniels, and we are currently making the leather wallets you can find at Nine Line Apparel at NineLineApparel.com. These are just a few of the clients we've gained over the last five years. That's right, I've only been in business for five years, and I've done it using three basic tips that I use on every single piece of leather that goes out of my shop. Today, I'm gonna give you the three tips that we use right here to make custom leather swag. So. Without any further ado, roll that intro, son. All right, guys, so this is my first instructional video, so y'all gonna have to be patient with me. I'm not a teacher. I'm a leather engraver. I'm also a respiratory therapist, but that's... Leather engraving is what this is about. Y'all be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and notification bell to get in on all the future videos we're gonna do. Like I said, I'm not, this is my first attempt at this, so I'm not great at it, so be patient with me, guys. Leave some comments down there. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me what I didn't do. Let me know. I wanna be able to help you guys turn your small business into a full-time, awesome, sweet, groovy, leather creation monster. There's really only three simple techniques that you really need to know to get started making awesome leather swag. Tip number one, never, ever, 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 under any circumstance, do you engrave or cut finished leather. When I say finished leather, I mean leather that looks like this. You understand? This right here. You don't engrave leather that's finished. This veg tan, undyed, unfinished leather. This is what you engrave. Always want to get a top quality, as high quality as you can. This is a sample that was actually sent to me from Weaver Leather. When leather's been dyed and finished, it has oils, chemicals, and other flammable material inside of it that causes that nasty, stank, charred, yuck smell that everybody complains about. One of the biggest things people constantly ask me is, how do you get rid of the stank smell? How do you get rid of the stink? You get rid of the stink by not doing things that cause it to stink in the first place. There. Remember, never, ever, 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 right now, I, I, I just know it, right now, I just know it, somebody out there is saying, I think I can do it. Don't do it. No shortcuts here, Jimmy. None. Unfinished, veg tan, no dye, no finish, no nothing. That's what you want. This do not engrave this, do not cut this. It will stink, it will char, it will not make a good engraving. I actually made this one. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Rocks like a hurricane. Moving on, tip number two. This is actually the golden nugget. This is the, the alpha and the omega of leather engraving. I know, I know. Before anybody says anything, before you start the whole commenting about you shouldn't wet the leather. Right now, right now, there's somebody out there saying, man, that they don't know what he's talking about. Don't wet the leather. When I say wet the leather, I don't mean dab it with a wet cloth. I mean, hold it under running water. Front side, back side, hold your leather under running water. And you actually want to do this until the leather's pliable. Now, you don't want to turn it into a sopping, spongy mess. No, you don't want to do that. What you're looking for here, you're wanting your leather to become pliable enough that it will lay flat when you throw it onto your laser bed. Of all the questions I see out there, this is the most common question I see in all of the groups. How do you get your leather to lay flat? I have seen some of the most ridiculous ways people have tried to get leather to lay still. They've taped it, they take masking tape, they take bricks, they take all kinds of stuff to make it lay flat. Just wet the leather, guys. Wet the leather until it lays flat. That's all you gotta do. This is what took me and put me into the leather business. Probably the biggest aspect of wetting leather, the biggest attribute that you have for wetting leather, 
what it does, if you've ever engraved leather, whether you've done the veg tan, like I told you, remember, veg tan leather, okay? Veg tan. If you've ever done it, no matter, it, dry leather, when you engrave dry leather, you get that black charred look. And, and you want, I know everybody wants that perfect, dark, deep engraving, but you don't want charcoal. You don't want it to look like it's been burnt. You want a nice, smooth, branded looking finish. That's what you want. You want something smooth, crisp, buttery, baby. Because the leather's wet, it kind of neutralizes that. It kind of offsets that the laser. It doesn't allow it to burn and char the leather. What you wind up with is a nice, really dark brown, smooth, crisp engraving that looks awesome when you finally put your dye to it. When you put leather dye to a engraved piece of leather that was actually wet before you did it, you get, I mean, you smooth as butter, baby. I mean, this thing looks great. Just look at the engraving on some of these. This is how you get results. All right, so where are we at? Okay, so tip number one, never engrave finished leather. Tip number two, wet your leather. So now we're moving on to tip number three. Tip number three, edging is basically done with a tool called a beveler. Some people call it an edger. You can get these things at any leather store anywhere that carries leather supplies uh, they come in various sizes for different thicknesses of leather you got to your you got zero your double zero your zero your one two three depending on the thickness of leather that you want to use they have a beveler for each one a beveler is just going to go you're going to take the beveler you're going to go right along the edge look at this right here see this if y'all see how the edge of this looks see the edge of that piece the edge of that right there how rounded off how smooth it looks it's nice Beautiful. See that right here? The edge of that piece right there? Y'all see that? That's what it looks like after it's been edged. You take that beveler and you just run it right along the edge. This is actually what a beveler looks like. This is a small one. Um, this is a Craft Tool Pro. This is actually the one I use. This is my favorite one. It's a Craft Tool Pro. This is a, this is a zero. It's actually a little bit smaller than what you need. I typically engrave six to seven ounce leather in all of my my cuffs leather bracelets my wallets i'll go down to three or four weight leather edging is what's going to take your leather and set it apart from this five six seven eight dollar leather cuffs and make that make yours a twenty thirty dollar cuff that's what's going to make the difference it's what's going to make it look awesome I mean, you can see here just look at the i mean if you can see the edge on these things the edge is absolutely beautiful i think i've got that upside down i do but look at there that's just, I mean, that's it, man. Your leather is still going to be wet after you've engraved it because remember, tip two was wet your leather. When you get your leather off the laser, it's going to be a little damp. I like to edge mine after it's dried a little bit. If you let it dry and get kind of crisp on the edges, you're going to have that charred, burned edge where it's cut it. You're going to have that along this area right here. You're going to have that charred, right there where it's actually cut it. That will dry out the edge a little bit. Don't try to edge it as soon as you get it off the laser if there's still a significant amount of dampness to your to your leather. Let it, let it dry just for a little bit and then you take your edger, take your beveler and then you go right along the edge. This can be something that a lot of people don't pick up on it immediately. A lot of people just gash, gash, gash. The way, the best way to do it what you want to do is you want to be able to edge it in one smooth, long motion. You don't want to chop, 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 chop. What you want to do is you want to go down the edge really smooth, all sides. You don't want to have to make more than one pass because that's what makes it uneven on the edges. After you've done this, after you've engraved it, you've cut it out, you're going to look at this, you're going to see that engraving, and you're going to be like, man, this thing looks great. This is just, this is just the bomb dizzle you're gonna be tempted not to, to bevel it, not to edge it. I don't care if the Lord of Leather himself comes down from his suede couch and says, you don't need to do it. Get thee behind me, deceiver of all things groovy. Edging your leather takes you to the next level. Edging your leather takes you to the next level. I might make that into a t-shirt, it's pretty good. Once you've finished edging it, once you've beveled, beveled it out, kind of feel the edge of it. Kind of feel the edge of your leather right there. If it still feels kind of rough, sometimes if it hasn't dried out enough, 
and after you've beveled it, if you after you've beveled it, if it's not quite dry enough, and you don't really, you're not really satisfied with that edge, you want it to be a little smoother, you can take, you can actually take a fine sanding block, a fine grit sanding block, like a, this right here is, let's see, this is a 320 grit. Just basically take it, there you go. That's all you do. You just get a little sand it, just sand the edge of it. Sand the edge of it out. Don't, don't lean in on it, just nice, buff it up on the edge. After you've done that, you wanna take one of these. This is a burnishing tool. Burnishing tool, if you'll see right here, has different notches for different thicknesses of leather. Boom, pal, what, come on, son. I like that. Boom, pal, what, come on, son. Just figured that out. Anyhow, you're gonna take this, find, find whichever one fits in the groove. You're just gonna burnish it. And you're just gonna rub it on there Go right across it, get a little friction going there. And what it's going to do, oh my goodness, that right there, that's going to, that's going to make that, mm, 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 mm. Edging it sets you apart from all the cheap, cheesy $5 leather. Burnishing knocks it out the park, son. Okay, bam, there you go. Recap, do not engrave finished leather. Ever, never, ever engrave finished leather. Number two. Wet your leather. Number three, edge and burnish your leather. All right, so once you've done all three of these steps, you're there. So now you've taken these three steps that I gave you, and what do you have? You look at it and you're like, this thing looks disgusting. And this is what you got. Look at there. See here? You got right here, it's it's nasty, it's got it doesn't look good, it's got dust, it's all dusty, it's got um stains, it looks like it's burned beyond repair, the back of it looks like this. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna wash it. That's right, you're gonna wet the leather again. I know, I know, I know. Wetting leather just scares the britches off some people. Trust me on this, trust me. You're gonna wanna wash your leather. I use a toothbrush, just take it. I will take a whole batch of leather, throw it into a plastic bin that I use in my dyeing room, take it in there, put it all in the bin, turn the water on, let it fill up, I use a toothbrush, don't go crazy with it. Now don't lean in on it. You don't wanna lean in. What you wanna do is you just wanna scrub lightly and what you're gonna wind up getting, it's gonna scrub out all of that dust and all that engraving dust. It's gonna make it, it's gonna make your leather, it's gonna darken it up a little bit. Once you've washed your leather, you've cleaned it up, you've scrubbed it out with your little toothbrush or whatever, I, I recommend a toothbrush, a soft brush toothbrush. What you're left with after you've cleaned it is a really pretty nice clean piece of veg tan leather that's ready to be dyed and finished. We'll talk more about doing the dyeing and finishing in another video. I'm gonna be putting out a whole series of videos on what to do, not only on how to dye, finish, distress. Distressing is a really big part of our, um, of our business here. Distressing gives a vintage look. It gives that old vintage, cool leather look. I mean, if you look at this nine line wallet we make for nine line apparel, just look at the vintage distressing we have on this. The vintage distressing on this nine line wallet is beautiful and we do all of that ourselves. That's another video for a different time. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be putting a lot of these things together for you guys, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Like I said, this was my first instructional video. Not something I've ever done before. Comment below, let me know what I did right. Let me know what I did wrong. Um, I wanna be able to help you guys. Uh, like I said, I've, I've only been in business for five years, but I've worked with some of the biggest entertainers in the entertainment industry, film, country music, rock and roll, and I just want to be able to help everybody do the same thing and, and get your swag out there. Till next time, guys. Laser on.